Hello everyone, welcome back to the Bayou, the Enchanted Bayou. I'm so happy you're here and that you clicked on this video. I really appreciate it. Thank you for being here with me. And if you're new here, thank you for joining us for the first time. What we do here is some true crime with a lot of paranormal because we talk to people that have passed away here so that maybe we can get some answers about what has happened since they passed. So if you're interested in this kind of thing, make sure to hit that subscribe button because we have a lot of fun. Now today, I have a special story for you. This is a story about Elisa Lam. And I know a lot of you have probably seen on Netflix the show, The Cecil Hotel. We're gonna talk about The Cecil, but we're gonna break it down and make it a lot more compact and easier to understand and look at the events. And then we're gonna do a spirit box session and see if we can reach out to Elisa and find out what really happened. Because, now, spoiler alert, so I apologize, but, in the, the series on Netflix, they really said that they believed that her death was because she was bipolar. I don't know. I guess I have this feeling that it wasn't, that there was more to it. You know, there's a lot of talk about the Cecil Hotel being haunted, and I very well think that it could. Now, I've never been to this location, but I'm going to send my guides there, or some people call them guardian angels. I have two main ones that help me do all this. Their names are Ethan and E. Ethan is kind of a jokester. E is kind of the bouncer and, and helps get people. And so we're gonna try and talk to Elisa because I wanna know, was it more of a paranormal thing that was going on at this Cecil Hotel? So let's get into it. Elisa was a bright young lady. She was 21 years old. She had taken a break from college. She lived up in Canada and she decided she wanted to go out and explore the world and discover herself. And she decided the best place to do that was to go down to California. Her first stop was in San Diego. And we know that she went to the zoo because she was an avid blogger. So she posted a lot of what she was doing, how she was feeling, everything on her blogs. And we know that she posted things about her being at the San Diego Zoo. Now she stayed in San Diego, she had a wonderful time, and her next stop though was LA, where unfortunately she would meet her end. She decided that she would stay at this hotel called the Cecil Hotel. And the Cecil Hotel, we'll get into that here in just a second. Now she checked into the Cecil Hotel on January 28th, and the Cecil Hotel it's gotta be haunted, okay? There are notorious serial killers that have worked out of the Cecil Hotel, including the Night Stalker Richard Ramirez, which, by the way, if you like the information about Night Stalker and you wanna learn more about him and see a paranormal video on him that is so creepy because I've already edited part of it, make sure you subscribe because that one's going to be coming out very, very soon. But so we've had serial killers working on this hotel. There was a lot of drugs, a lot of prostitutes, a lot of drifters that went in and out of this hotel. It was a crazy place, and you know what? It still is. It's in downtown LA at Skid Row, where the majority of the homeless population in LA lives, and it's just a creepy place. This thing has been there for years, and it's just a creepy, creepy hotel. So the CISO Hotel knew that it was creepy. However, it's posted out there for a lot of tourists to come and stay, and they think they're staying in downtown LA, so they get this wonderful cheaper hotel and stay at this hotel and then they find out that they are in downtown Skid Row which is even worse than being you know downtown in the middle of LA. So let's talk about the Cecil Hotel. It was built in 1924 and it was a beautiful place. You can imagine it and the lobby I hear is still amazing and beautiful. I can show you some pictures of it. Just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous building. On the inside anyway. It's a little rough on the outside and Elisa Lamb checks in on the 28th. Now, the version of it from the 28th of 2013 is a lot different than the 1924 version. Now, this building, all these years later, is instead of being at the hub of downtown LA, which Elisa thought where she was checking in at, it happens to be in the middle of the largest homeless population in the United States, and that's on Skid Row in Los Angeles. So it's got the homeless population, which unfortunately, we don't take very good care of our homeless. We don't get them the help, mental help they need, and just the help in general that they need. You know, it's a little scary of a place for a new tourist, a 21-year-old girl especially, 
out on her own. And the Cecil Hotel has also been home to such serial killers like Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker. In the documentary, they actually said that he would go out, kill people, basically, and he would come back to the Cecil Hotel, remove his clothes in the back alley, and then go up to his room in his underwear and no one noticed. So that's the kind of place that we're talking about when we talk about the Cecil Hotel. Now we need to talk about her time in LA. So she gets to LA, she checks in the Cecil Hotel. So we know that part and we know what a really kind of shady place the Cecil is and the area around the Cecil is. But she checks into her hotel at the Cecil. And the Cecil, to try and give itself a little bit better of a name, has renamed a portion of it Stay on Main. So she thinks she's staying not just in this in the Cecil, which has this horrible reputation for kind of being a scuzzy place, I guess you could say. I hate to say that, but uh, it's kind of known for that. But she thinks she's checking into this place called Stay on Main, which really is just another broken off piece of the Cecil Hotel. So she checks in, she gets a room with multiple roommates in there, and she goes out to a show. And during this show, she's acting so strange and so weird, she actually writes a letter to the main, I don't know if it was a comedian that she was watching, but she writes a letter to the person on stage, and she demands that the bouncers give the letter to this person. Well, they think she's being weird, and of course, they kick her out. And she goes back to her hotel room. Now she's acting strange there. So strange at the hotel room that she's leaving weird notes for people, telling them that they need to leave. So they call the front desk, and she gets a room of her very own. Now, on January 31st is where all things kind of come together. We know the last time that she was seen alive was at a bookstore called The Last Bookstore. And that's going to come in later when we're talking about some theories and everything regarding her her passing. So we know that she had gone to a bookstore and she was out walking around and going around the city and enjoying herself and she had bought some books there and they were apparently too heavy for her to carry. We do know that she had two men bring the books to her from the bookstore. They delivered them to her so that she didn't have to carry them around while she was out walking. But that's the last time anyone ever saw her alive. And like I said, January 31st is the the key day. That's the day that she's supposed to be checking out of the Cecil Hotel and continuing on her trip and going to Santa Cruz. But she doesn't check out. In fact, they find all her stuff in the room and her parents get suspicious on the first because she had been calling them every day and she didn't call. So on February 1st is when her parents start becoming suspicious because her parents had been receiving a call from their daughter every single day and she was checking in with them, letting them know that she was okay on this trip all by herself and they didn't receive a call. And so on February 1st, they were worried about her and they contacted the local police. That's when the police get involved. Now. Alyssa is missing. We don't know where she's at at this point. The police actually find video footage from the hotel of her last time in the hotel and they never see her check out. So we're going to go ahead and watch that footage. But before we watch that footage, two things that I want you guys to watch out for. The first is that you'll see that there's a little timestamp on the bottom of the screen and that's all blurred out. So how did that get blurred out? We don't know. The other thing is, is this has clearly been edited which we need to know, was it someone in the hotel that edited this footage? The hotel staff say, and the hotel manager says that she herself gave the police this footage and that she did not edit it, she did not tamper with it, she does not know anyone that would have tampered with it. And yeah, and the police are saying, of course, that they didn't tamper with the video, but the police have said that they did possibly slow it down to in hopes that people might recognize her better. I'll let you decide. Let's go ahead and watch the video together.
Isn't that crazy? Did you see how she's making just these weird hand movements? Everything, she's hiding from people. She's talking to people in the documentary. They say that this is because she was not really taking her bipolar medicine. Maybe she had had a psychotic break and thought that people were really there and she was talking to them. But I think that possibly there might be more. Is this ghost? Is this a paranormal thing that's going on? I don't know, but we're going to ask the spirit world, I guess you could say, and see what they have to say about it. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and finish our story. So now the cops are involved and they found this footage and they're looking through all the hotel footage and they also discover that there is no footage of her leaving the hotel. So they know that this is the place where they're looking for her at. Now, they bring dogs in. They start searching the hotel. They even go up on the roof. They're searching everywhere. The only thing about this is because they don't have a search warrant, some of the people in the Cecil Hotel actually live there, and so they can't actually enter the premises to see if anyone's holding her. And we don't know if anyone was maybe holding her. Is that why when the toxicology reports came back, she was low on her medicine? Was someone Had someone kidnapped her and had her in their room? The dogs didn't make any real hits on anything, but we do know she was discovered um, on top of the building and the dogs didn't make any hits there either. So I'm just throwing that one out there. I could be wrong on that. Again, we're going to ask the spirits and see what we can find out. But yeah, now let's talk about her death. So on February 19th, the customers that were staying in the hotel started complaining of low water pressure in the hotel. They started saying that the water that was coming out of their faucets that they were using to drink and using to brush their teeth with and using to shower with and do whatever they needed to use water for, that it was coming out dirty. And in some cases, it was coming out black. That's when the hotel manager contacted the maintenance manager and he went up to go check the water tanks. And when he checked the water tanks, he opened up the tank and he saw Elisa's body. So she was found floating in the water tank and she was found by the maintenance man. Now, this is where all kinds of stuff gets really strange. There were no bruises on her, no broken bones on her. The report that came out said that she wasn't on any drugs. So why was she acting so strange in the elevator? Nothing, nothing like that. Nothing that could really say this is why she died. There was a lid on top of the tank. It weighed about 20 pounds. And this is where things get a little crazy again. So the maintenance man said that when he discovered her, that the lid was actually open. Okay. The cops, however, said that when she was discovered, the lid was actually closed. Now, of course, the maintenance man is the one who discovered her and he's going to know best. But why would the lid be open in the first place? However, if you say that the lid was closed, then there has to be foul play involved in this because from where she was in the tank and, and the water, she could not physically reach up and close that lid on herself. So did someone put her in the tank? Did someone force her to get into the tank? Or did she really have a psychotic episode and she was hiding from someone and got in the tank? We don't know, we gotta figure that out too. They say that because of her psychotic episode, she was hiding from people that she was maybe hiding from in the elevator and that she got in the tank herself. Now, I have a hard time believing that because how is she going to, who, who hides in a, in a water tank? It's very hard to get up there. It's difficult to maneuver around up there. Then she'd have to pick up this 20 pound lid and open the lid then she'd have to jump in. There's just so much that just seems wrong with her getting in this water tank that it makes me think foul play or again, maybe it was paranormal. We don't know, but we got to check that out and ask those questions too. So her death was ruled an accidental drowning because again, there was no evidence that she had been harmed at all. There was no evidence that anyone had been holding her or tied her up, anything like that. Nothing on her had been harmed. But we don't know also how long she had been up there. Unfortunately, they weren't able to tell that. Here's where we get into the, I'm going to say C theories, but the crazy theories about maybe what happened to her. Now, I apologize too. If you hear some scratching, I have a bearded dragon. And he really wants out of his little cage right now. So I will make sure that when we're doing the spirit box though, that you're not going to hear any scratching. 
but his name's Monster and he really wants out right now. Okay, back to the subject though. Let's get into the crazy theories. Now, the first crazy theory, I don't know if any of you have ever seen the movie Dark Water, but it basically is a story about a little girl and she is wearing a red jacket, just like at least Slam was wearing. She's wearing a red jacket a lot of times to the movie. And this little girl climbs up to the rooftop and gets in the water tank and drowns in the water tank. And this building was, it has similarities to the Cecil Hotel. Let's just put it that way. But the water tank's quite a bit different. And people also were complaining how they found the little girl was because the dark water was coming out of the tap, I believe. So, I mean, I haven't seen that movie in a long time. It's been a really long time for me, but there's a lot of similarities in that movie and a lot of, I guess you could say coincidences, but are they really a coincidence? Some people think that there is a, I guess you could say kind of a copycat murderer who saw that movie and decided that that's how that they would kill someone. Now, we don't know. Again, going to have to ask the spirits, but that is possible. That is possible because there are a lot of similarities. But even down to the red jacket, though, I mean, are you going to dress her for that day, or did someone give her that jacket? It seems like it's a stretch for a setup. The other one is that at the time that she was staying at the Cecil Hotel, there was a tuberculosis outbreak, and a lot of the homeless were getting tuberculosis at the time outside of the hotel, too. Now, this is kind of crazy, but the test to test for tuberculosis is called LAM, L-A-M, which is Elisa's last name. And the second word of the test is Elisa. It's E-L-I-S-A, exactly how she spells hers. So her name is Elisa Lamb, and the name of the test is Lamb Elisa. That, that one blew my mind. I mean, do I think this is some huge government conspiracy and she was a bioweapon to bring tuberculosis to the homeless population and help clear out the homeless population? Again, kind of a stretch. Could it be possible? kind of a stretch. I guess it could. I don't know. But it seems like quite a bit of a stretch. I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think? Do you think that she was some bioweapon? Do you think that it was a copycat murder? Do you think it was her bipolar? Do you think it was haunted? I don't know. I don't know. The, the last thing, and this isn't really a way that she died, but this is kind of creepy as far as a weird coincidence goes. I guess some people got on the web and figured out that the last bookstore, remember we talked about that in the beginning of this? The last bookstore, the bookstore that she visited for the last time, this bookstore, if you go onto their website in the registrar, you can look up their address and you will find their zip code. And the zip code pinpoints a small town in Canada and the main drop point on Google Maps for this small town is a cemetery that she's actually buried in. I, I have I have nothing to explain that. I mean, I think the universe works in mysterious ways, but I have nothing to explain that. That's just, that's just amazing. Amazing to me. Amazing. So again, like I said, I want to know what you guys think. Do you think, what do you think? I mean, are there other theories out there that you believe? There was talk about this musician that could have been the killer. Do you guys think he was? Although he was cleared, supposedly he wasn't even at the hotel at the time. Do you think, who knows, who knows? Maybe she met someone at the club that night that was the murderer. And we just don't know who she met at the club that night. You know, she did go out, not, not to a club, but to the show, I guess you could say. Maybe she met someone there. Maybe she met someone at the bookstore. I want to know what you guys think. But I also want to know what the spirits think. So, of course, we're going to do a spirit box session. Now, if you're new here, I want to go over the details of how we do this. Like I said, I have two spiritual guides, and they are the reason that we can do all this. They are amazing. Every single spirit box that you hear on my channel, you're going to hear their voices, and usually you're going to hear their names, or at least Ethan's name. He comes through all the time. This is a spirit box that I use. It's called a PSB7, and this is the one that you'll see in all kinds of shows, especially like ghost adventure shows. Just plugged in with regular cord, and this cord, nothing fancy, it just attaches to a JBL speaker. My old JBL speaker, it works wonderful for our purposes. So we're going to do a spirit box and jump into it and ask some of these questions. Now, when I get into this, I get really, it's almost like being in a trance. And so if there are questions that I leave out that maybe you want 
you know, you want me to ask, leave them down in the comments below because sometimes I forget things and maybe I can do a part two of this video and ask your guys' questions of Elisa Lamb, see if we can get her to visit us first, but at least ask the spirit world about what really happened to her. So, if you have been wearing headphones at this point, I will warn you, this gets extremely, extremely loud. Now, it's great to wear headphones so that you can hear all the voices that I hear, but it gets really loud. So you might want to lower your volume first and then you can turn it up later and adjust it. But I just don't want everyone hurting their ears out there, so please be careful. Another thing about my spirit boxes is I have a friend who reviews all of them with me. Well, most of them with me. And his job for 10 years in the U.S. Navy was to sit on a submarine and listen to radio static and interpret that radio static so that he could save your life, my life, if you're in the U.S., and save our lives and look after us. And that's what his job was. So he is very familiar with listening to all the radio static and knowing exactly what it says. And he reviews it with me too, as long as we run it through some uh, different programs so that we can pull out the, the voices. <sighs> Let's get into it. your death. Is that okay? Alisa, we really want to know. We saw you in the elevator that night. Who were you hiding from when you were in the elevator? Well, that's a strong girl voice coming through. <laughs> outside the elevator. I hear a lot of people coming through. 
Ooh, Ethan and E, can you help? Only Elisa talk to us, please. Elisa, do you have a message for your family that you would like them to know or get out there? What's your message, honey? A lot of people are concerned about you, Elisa. Do you have a message for all the people that are worried about you? Okay, Elisa, is there anything else that you want to say? To all the people out there, is there anything that you'd like to say to let everyone know? Maybe let us know that you're doing okay. Or if you need help, that we can help you. Okay, Elisa, I'm going to let you go. Thank you for coming and talking to us. guys so i hope you like that spirit box session i know it was kind of a short spirit box session i only did one but i think that you know got a lot of the questions asked that i wanted to ask and that i thought that you guys would want to ask and in addition to that i heard it sounded like some really good responses from a female coming through so at this point of course i don't know what's all been said because i never like to guess i like to like I said, have it thoroughly reviewed, not just by, by me, but by my professional, and see what we can find out. It, it sounded really good, though, so I hope we got a lot of the answers, and if there's, like I said, something that you guys still want to ask, maybe we can do a part two to this, and if she needs help, then I'll either help her. I don't know, do you guys want to see that? Uh, because usually I don't record those. But I'm happy to do that if that's something you guys would be interested in. I basically just have Ethan and E just go help her cross over. That's, that's what they do. They're pretty amazing at that. Uh, it only takes like half a second, so it's kind of kind of pointless to record. Anyway, hope you guys like the video. And I hope everyone's doing good and staying warm right now because I know it's really cold. At least in the United States it really is. And I will be talking to you guys soon. And thanks for coming to the Bayou. Bye, guys. Bye.